Hey guys, so much interesting video on Wild Rift. So they're back with a Ash support uh, supplementary guide, and in particular, we're gonna be looking at Serpent's Fan. So now, um, because shielding is like really, really common in the current meta, both on tanks like from their passive skills or gar gargoyles, stoneplate, and a lot of the enchanter supports as well. Even certain other like damage focused champions like let's say Yone with his W or Kai'Sa with her ultimate, um, there is a huge prevalence of of course shielding so Serpent's Fang has become really good of an item but the issue is of course not a lot of champions can build it. Generally only like assassins can uh, build Serpent's Fang because of the lethality aspect but Ash support can build Serpent's Fang really well. Because, of course, she has the volley which can hit like multiple members of the enemy team at one go. And that will, of course, apply Serpent's Fang's passive, um, the Shield Reaver, to all of the champions that she hits. And this, of course, reduces their shielding by a lot. And overall, again, contributes to Ash Support's identity of simply just being a utility champion. So let's quickly go over Ash Support's build. So first up, you go for Relic Shield, and reason is, of course, currently Relic Shield is the better support item and is much better for wave management and also stacks really quickly. So I really don't see any reason for almost any support to take uh, the Spectral Sickle, except perhaps maybe Senna and or Yumi. But I've even seen some Senna and Yumi players take Spectral Sickle, so yeah. So first item on Ash support is... Like almost always going to be Imperial Mandate. This is sort of really why Ash support is good because he can apply the Imperial Mandate passive onto um, many members of the enemy team at once. And when your teammates attack, uh, of course, it will deal the bonus magic damage and of course gi give both you and your teammates additional movement speed. It also, of course, gives you health and ability haste, which are of course the two main like traits that you are really looking for. Um, of course, ability haste to spam your W more and health just being a little bit more tanky. AP in this case also kind of helps because it gives your ultimate a little bit more damage but that's not too important. Ash support doesn't care too much about damage. Then you go for the I Ionian Redemption. Ionian Boots of course more ability haste to cast abilities more often, namely your, your volley. And Redemption of course just a very good support and chance to heal your team. Next up, Generally, Serpent's Fang is built uh, over here after the Imperial Mandate. Uh, of course, this gives you 50 AD, 10 Ability Haste, uh, Armor Penetration, as well as the Shield Reaver. Now, you don't really care too much about like the stats per se. Uh, of course, since Ash is a ADC, having the, the attack damage and armor penetration is going to help her a little bit with her damage. But once again, Ash support is mainly about utility and not damage. So the Ability Haste and the Shield Reaver is really what you're after. Mainly, the Shield Reaver is the reason why you built Serpent's Fang. Next up, you have Mana Mune. So Mana Mune, of course, you want to get the tier a little bit early on. Normally, you get it after completing your Imperial Mandate. You get the tier, and, and at this point, your tier would be like about halfway or so stacked. You get the Mana Mune, gives you the, the mana and the ability haste, as well as the attack damage. And of course, um, at this point, when you evolve into the, into the Mirror Mana, your poke on your W is going to be pretty insane, because you got the, the Mana Mune poke. You got the Serpent's Fang damage and you have the Imperial Mandate damage as well. So you basically just poke people out and in doing so you apply Mandate and you apply Serpent's Fang and also deal damage with Mana Mune. And finally you top it off with a Black Cleaver again giving you more ability haste, more health, a little bit more AD as well as of course the passive to give you more movement speed and also the Sunder passive which in case you guys didn't know, when you press your Q on Ash and you attack one person, you max stack the Black Cleaver in one attack because of how many arrows there are in one basic attack when it's empowered by Q. So you can attack each enemy once to apply the Sunder passive onto all the enemies for your team to do more damage to them and also of course you to do more damage to them. Now, because we have Serpent Spang, you'll realize that we've sort of had to give up Moral Reminder. Now, Moral Reminder is really only important for the Executioner's Calling uh, aspect, which of course gives you the Grievous Wound. So if you need Grievous Wounds, you can and should go for Executioner's Calling early on in the match. Probably sometimes before Imperial Mandate, sometimes like um, after Imperial Mandate, sometimes after Serpent Spang, depending on when you really need that anti-heal. So... You do want to go for this, which basically means you won't have enough space to build Black Cleaver. So when you hit um, these three items, and you would, and in this place you would have a um, 
a executioner's calling. When you have enough to build Black Cleaver, you want to sell the Relic Shield and build Black Cleaver, and then of course save up enough money to complete your Moral Reminder and complete that. So here are some like al alternative items that could be useful as well, although I don't really see this uh, being too good anymore because this like default build I think is the best. But you have like Cosmic Drive for, for movement speed and ability haste, you have Leandri's Torment for the burn, and you have like the normal support items uh, because you can proc it using your Font of Life which we'll get into in a moment. And uh, Exclusive Jar is just a general useful item uh, in terms of its stats for its cost. So for the runes, you want to go for Font of Life. Now I used to like to go airy more than Font and I used to, to like alternate between those two depending on the matchup. But nowadays I go for Font like 90-99% of the matches because once again, Ash support is about utility, airy is more about damage because you can't really use it to shield your allies, you can only use it to poke the enemy. So Fawn of Life you can use it to of course heal your allies which again you can apply it onto multiple people with your volley which is kind of the main crux of why Ash can even be you know, built as a support in the first place. But you might think that this, you know, this like heals really really little, little and it does heal really little but of course it does increase a little bit with your Imperial Mandate but that's not the point. The point is that over the course of the match, you will be able to heal a a ton of of like health for your teammates, and you will see later in the post game screen that I I heal more than hundred percent of people at, at my rank. So just from this rune alone, uh, and of course from the Iron in Redemption, you have insane insane amounts of healing. So of course next up you go for weakness because Ash applies slows on her abilities and auto attack. So weakness of course does help you out. Uh, in terms of letting your team do more damage. You have the bone plating for the uh, anti-combo uh, damage and of course you have Hunter Genius for more cooldown reduction. And finally for the spells, you want to go for heal and you want to go for ex uh, not exhaust, you want to go for heal and you want to go for flash. Heal of course to be able to heal your allies. And if you know, um, in certain specific matches you can take exhaust, like for example if your ADC doesn't have exhaust, like if you have ghosts or something and you need exhaust for a particular member of the enemy team, you could do that. But Aside from that, you should be taking heal majority of the time. So with all that out of the way, let's move on to looking at the gameplay. Righty, so now moving on to the gameplay as usual. So in this match, it's really really interesting uh, game for of course playing the Serpent's Fang Ash. So you don't uh, go for Serpent's Fang every game. Of course, if you don't have shielding on enemy team, you just remove the Serpent's Fang, go for the previous like uh, Ash support build that I covered on the channel. Of course, it's basically the same build, just that it, uh, you remove the Serpent's Fang and you just go for uh, the Moral Reminder as your last item. So here at, at level 1, I immediately get hooked by the Blitzcrank, but the important thing here is I don't panic, I don't use my Flash or my Heal, and because of that, Twitch gets to free fire onto the enemy team. Here, I Flash forward to secure the kill. Now. I have no idea why Twitch, Twitch didn't flash. I, I didn't flash initially, if you guys saw, there was like a second there where both me and Twitch were just running towards them, no one flashed. I thought Twitch was gonna flash to secure the kill. Since he didn't want to flash and secure the kill, I flashed to secure the kill. And when I flashed to secure the kill, he flashed as well, which didn't really make sense. So we ended up both flashing when only one person needed to flash. I thought I wanted to give him the kill and let him flash for the kill, but he didn't, so I wasn't gonna let the Kaiser escape. But anyways, uh, it was, I guess, kind of just a big miscommunication there, but either way it worked out. So you see here that a lot of times if Blitzcrank hooks you at level 1, you're not really going to die unless number 1, you're very very badly out of position, or number 2, they have a very very strong like level 1 ADC like a Draven. But Kai'Sa is most likely not going to kill you level 1, especially because I didn't let her pop her passive um, onto me. It only got up to 4 stacks, so she didn't do that much damage. Uh, but if if, even if it was something like a Nautilus or a Thresh, likely most of the time you would still be safe. You of course have to, to see the scenario based on who your ADC is, who the enemy uh, ADC is as, uh, or support is as well. And you know, just play by ear whether you want to use your sums or not. But here you can see that by not using my sums, by holding them, um, they were baited into attacking me in a fight that they don't win in the sense that they can't kill me. Uh, and Twitch was able to free fire to the point where Blitzcrank was the one who was in trouble. And by the time he realized that and started walking away, it was a little bit too little too late. Here, uh, Lee Sin hops in. I of course don't have any summoner spells. Twitch's exhaust comes in really really late. If he exhausted any earlier, I definitely would have lived there. But unfortunately for me, uh, 
I end up dying, Lee Sin gets away scot-free, but thankfully Kai'Sa doesn't have anywhere to run. We have Pantheon on the chase, and Pantheon smites Kai'Sa down, spears her, and secures the kill. So, um, a lot of action happening in the early game, but of course the first thing we want to cover is why uh, Serpent's Fang Ash is so important in this game. And of course you see that in this game, I already have the Serrated Dirk and a Longsword, which basically tells you I'm going for Serpent's Fang first item. Now normally, I would never really recommend to ever go for Serpent's Fang first item because of how strong Imperial Mandate makes Ash support. However, in this game, it simply has too much value. So, you can see Seraphine has a W which shields the entire team, so that heart counters Seraphine's shield. Timo has nothing, but we have Kai'Sa who has her ultimate uh, uh, and gives her a huge shield. We have Lee Sin who has his W shield. And we have Blitzcrank who has his passive shield. So literally, 4 out of 5 of the champions have a shield. And Seraphine's shield is a big shield which applies on multiple people. Um, so I think in this game, Serpent's Fang it just becomes so important. And I decide it's important enough to rush it as my first item. So anyways, this is like again, one of the very 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 rare instances that you go for Serpent's Fang first item. Mo most of the time, going for Mandate first item makes way more sense. But anyways, in this particular game, just because of how much uh, shielding there is on the enemy team, I have, I have of course chosen to do that. So here Blitzcrank rotated in mid uh, to mid for some reason, which basically allows me and Twitch to uh, harass this Ash. Uh, Lee Sin, however, I spot him coming up. You can see that I immediately walk back and I ping Twitch back. Um, but of course, uh, I still have my ultimate, which allows me to stun the Lee Sin. Unfortunately, I end up um, taking the kill on accident there because Twitch did waste way a lot way too much burst from that one auto attack and ended up finishing off with the auto attack. Here I tank a tower shot to let Pantheon go in and once again uh, with the Kaisa slightly out of my screen I launch a W um, just for the slow but end up uh, KSing the Pantheon inadvertently. Um, once again you are playing support and even though you're playing Ash, you are building as a support. So here uh, I was initially trying to back but I realized that we can actually pick up this first tower which is exactly what we're doing here. So we, we managed to crack the first tower uh, before the Dragon and Herald even spawn. Uh, yeah, me and Twitch are doing well. So once again, uh, as I was trying to say just now, remember that when you're playing Ash support, you're building Ash support, so you are a support. Even though you're playing an ADC champion, you are a support. So getting kills on yourself is not exactly the most useful thing in the world because you're building more and more support items. Whereas getting kills on Twitch, for example, is going to be way better because you can get his ADC items and scale faster. Even getting kills on like Pantheon is better even though he falls off, but he can get a stronger early game and of course snowball the game even more. Basically, long story cut short is you're the support, so getting kills on anyone is better than you. So do not KS people when you're playing support, uh, whether you're playing Ash or any other support, unless you're like Pike ulting someone. If not, don't KS when you're playing support. Anyways, here looks like both uh, Pantheon and Lee Sin are more interested in the Herald than the Dragon. So basically, both teams migrate down here, leaving Twitch and uh, Kai'Sa in a 1v1 up in the top uh, top lane. And this is pretty strange because normally this happens at Dragon instead. But anyways, here now, Lee Sin rotated to mid, Pantheon is backing, and it just becomes a really, really strange situation. So now I'm roaming back to mid, so I have easy access to both the Dragon and the Herald. We can see Lee Sin on the Dragon now, so I'm going to be rotating over um, to the Dragon. I'm using the Relic to quickly proc the the uh, cannon minion and me and Brian can rotate to, to the dragon. Pantheon man drops himself into the dragon pit. Lee Sin hops right on out and um, here put the control ward to prevent uh, anyone from seeing anything but Lee Sin still manages to hop the wall to secure the dragon. I ult the, the Lee Sin for us to secure the kill um, and here the fight kind of goes sideways uh, with Kai'Sa picking up a double kill as well so here we're gonna have to back off a little bit and here I'm just gonna back. Enemy team gets mid prio and is gonna start shoving down mid. Now since I do not have my support item completed as of yet, I don't uh, buy the redemption. I'm going to buy the tier first to start stacking the tier and then on my next back I can pick up the redemption uh, when my support item is completed. So here I'm, I'm kind of waiting for a, for a way so that I can prop my support item. Here I, I do manage to do that. Uh, of course in this game I've been roaming a lot more than a general su uh, support would. I'm just staying with the ADC because a lot of the action has been happening elsewhere on the map because Blitzcrank is roaming to mid uh, you know, a lot and also the, the Herald fight happened at the bot lane 
or rather not even Harold fight. It's just two teams posturing for Harold happened in, in the the bot lane. So so I'm rotating a lot, but now I'm finally back at, at, uh, at top lane. Of course, Pantheon did uh, ult in and is able to secure the kill together with the Twitch. I wanted to shoot my W again for the assist, but um, of course, uh, that might end up chaosing by accident, so I, I don't quite do that. Or that I do do that, I believe, in, in the in the uh, wrong direction or something like that. Here, Timo puts down the Herald. Three enemy uh, team members are present, so we can't really do anything aside from just clearing the Herald, which is exactly what we're going to do. Seraphine has a Banshee's Veil as her first item, which is a really interesting, uh, really interesting buy. And you can also can see kind of like the ash, uh, ash arrow tax, as I like to call it, on the enemy team. So, uh, because of how long the stun is on Ash's arrow, you force the enemy team into going for, uh, for items like Merc Treads. So you can see Merc Treads on the Sin, Merc Treads on Teemo, Merc Treads on. Um, the Seraphine. So we also have a Morgana in, in this game, by the way. So Merc Treads has kind of insane value for the enemy team from the Ash Alt Morgana root as well as the the brand like brand and Morgana's general magic damage. So uh, really smart uh, purchases by the enemy team. And Blitzcrank even has gone so far to get a QSS. Now why did they do that? I don't know. I don't think it makes sense for our support to get QSS because. Even if he gets hit by Ash Arrow or Morgana Stun, it's probably better than anyone else on his team eating that ability. So I wouldn't be buying QSS if I was with Crank. Unless maybe his game plan is to stand in front, tank the Ash Arrow or tank the Morgana root, QSS and run away. Speaking of which here, I hit the stun onto Blitzcrank, Blitzcrank QSS and runs away. So I guess, you know, without that QSS there, he would have just died to a spore. But because of his QSS, he is able to uh, escape. Here Blitzcrank tries to hit the hook over the wall on me, which obviously tells me that there is a ward in the river bush because he wouldn't have vision of me otherwise due to the fact he doesn't have minions. I use the Hawkshot to kind of scout the area and uh, spot no one there. So I'm not spot no one there. I spot the three of them there, but doesn't really matter. So anyways, um, I've gone through this before, but since it's been some time since I made an Ash support video, the reason why Ash support is so good is because all of her skills have some kind of supportive capability. Her Q... Um, of course, allows you to proc Black Cleaver instantly, gives you a slow to allow you to slow the enemy team. Her W allows you to hit multiple enemies at one go, slows down all of the enemies, and procs your items like your Imperial Mandate, like your Serpent's Fang, um, like your Mana Mute, etc. So it does damage, you know, procs your items, applies a slow to the enemy team. Absolutely amazing. Her E allows you to gain vision uh, of a lot of places which you wouldn't want to personally check or wouldn't want anybody to check. Just launch your hawk shot in the area and check, you know, if there's anyone there. And her ult, great for disengage, great for finding picks, uh, as you guys saw just now on the Lee Sin, and also great for just like general cross map plays to like save your teammates or to set up a kill for them. And yeah, so Ash support, amazing utility. Main weakness of Ash support, incredibly squishy. Um, you know, and is obviously just not not tanky whatsoever. So you're just like any other ADC, incredibly squishy. You get caught, you die. But of course, with the slows and, and all of that good stuff, it's really difficult to, of course, catch Ash. Um, so if you do get caught, you're you're probably out of position, and probably means you deserve to be caught, which obviously happens from time to time. And you know, normally if, you, if that happens in a match or so, it's pretty normal. Anyways, here both Dragon and Herald are spawning again. Second Dragon, second Herald. Here Morgana hits the, the root onto the Blitzcrank. And the Blitzcrank appears to be, like, the, from this point on in the match, he appears to be semi-AFK. Uh, slash, like, just randomly baiting for no reason. Anyways, here, if he was trying to bait, he kind of felt miserably there because uh, the Brand Burn ends up killing him. But I, I, I really don't have any idea of whether he's having connection issues or he's just trying to bait. Um, Seraphine out goes wide, hits nobody on my team. Double redemption comes down for the heal. Uh, for some reason, Morgana got redemption as well, but I, I found that, that to be pretty weird because Morgana generally wants uh, stasis so she can out stasis, but uh, but yeah. So here we end up going for the Herald instead of the Dragon. So here I send the Hawkshot to check on the status of Dragon. You can see that Dragon is, uh, right, you can't see, but Dragon, as you guys can see, has just gone down. So basically, it was really low when the Hawkshot reached. But Pantheon didn't wait for the hot shot. He just like ulted in, and now he's dead. So that's not ideal. Here I use the the ult onto the Lee Sin. Um, unfortunately, he's a little bit out of range, can't be caught. Um, he does launch himself back in though, so I guess he can be caught. 
So here Morgana hits the root onto Kai'Sa, Kai'Sa dies. And here we're on the chase for Seraphine and Blitzcrank, who are the last remaining uh, two members of the enemy team. Here I splash over to W to break the Banshees, not Banshees, um, yeah, it is Banshees actually, <laughs> to break the Banshees and then I uh, auto-attack to slow. Uh, eventually though, we do manage to kill the Blitzcrank instead of Seraphine, but hey, you know, that still works out. Uh, and with that, our job is done. The enemy team is beginning to respawn and there's not a lot we can do anymore. So here I'm just going to recall and uh, pick up the Imperial Mandate at last. Of course, Imperial Mandate, as I mentioned, is the most important item for Ash support. Uh, a little bit late on the Imperial Mandate this match, of course, because we went for the tier and the uh, redemption in between. But we still got there eventually, and now you can uh, you can see that Ash uh, gives a lot more utility with that movement speed. Uh, the Ash support with Imperial Mandate is really, really underrated in terms of how much extra damage and like um, not really damage, but movement speed she gives her team. Like just chasing people down or just kiting away from the enemy team with Ash's Imperial Mandate is insane because of how Ash slows them down. And like here, so I slowed Timo down. Imperial Mandate props and gives Bran and, and uh, Morgana the movement speed uh, to run towards the Teemo and just kill him like that. Lee Sin hits the Sonic Wave onto me but I'm not too scared because my whole team is with me. Here I, again I'm, I'm using my W to apply Imperial Mandate, apply Serpent's Fang, make sure that not too much shielding or anything like that can happen. And yeah, so generally as support, just we just want to play uh, Play in the back line, just launch your W's non-stop into the enemy team. When there's an opportunity, cast your ultimate to of course try to get a pick. Things like that. So here I'm letting Brand take the wave while I just stand around and get passive XP. So even if you're a support and you're not taking the wave, there is still benefit to standing around the wave when someone takes it because you still get the, the passive goal and the passive XP from the wave to, you know, of course, uh, get yourself to a higher level and, of course, just get yourself more, like, a uh, passive goal in general. So here you can see a couple of enemies around the area. I, I ward the, the bush to just make sure that nothing funky is happening. Blitzcrank uses the QSS to escape again. Once again, I, I guess you could say that the QSS is a good purchase from, from Blitz. Because without the QSS, on, he would have died on like two occasions now. So I guess it does have some value. Here we spot the Lee Sin, but he's already taken the buff, so not too much we can do, but still shows how Hawkshot is really useful. And here Lee Sin hits the Q onto Morgana. I, I actually thought Lee Sin was going to go in, but he did not. Uh, anyways, our whole team is kind of grouped up. Twitch tries to, to uh, go on the Lee Sin. Lee Sin is really overextended. I, I actually tried to ult him here, but he ends up jumping the wall, so a little bit unfortunate. Teemo coming in for a strange flank, but Lee Sin's already gone, so basically we just end up chasing Teemo down and getting a free kill. Um, Hook comes in from the Blitzcrank, uh, we try to use Redemption to save uh, our teammates and double Redemption again with the huge healing. And now uh, Blitzcrank is gone as well and now we're on the chase for the rest of the kills. Nothing too much happening here, not too much we can do uh, uh, to them when they're both under tower. So here I'm just going to back and uh, pick up my Mana Mune. So of course, once again, Mana Mune is never really going to be evolved when you get it. Here I spot Lee Sin overextended, so I hit the ulti um, to stun him and my team is able to get the pick onto the Lee Sin. In the meanwhile, Morgana manages to die to Kai'Sa in the mid lane and ends up uh, giving a shutdown unfortunately. But here we're going to launch the Hawk Shot. I, I thought that they ran into our jungle, but it turns out they didn't actually run into our jungle. They must have ran um, somewhere else. So thinking if we could spot them, we could try to chase them down. Uh, but yeah, nothing too much happened. So anyways, since the Lee Sin is dead and our team is like really, uh, not really, but decently far ahead, we're gonna just do the Baron. So the, the Dragon is spawning, which is either the best or worst time to do the Baron depending on how you wanna to look at it. So the good thing about Dragon spawning during Baron is the enemy team is probably distracted trying to set up for Dragon or all pathing towards Dragon. So you're gonna they're gonna be distracted and not go for Baron. But the bad thing about that is, as you guys can see here, after you get Baron, it's really hard to just go to Dragon and contest it. So you're more or less sacking a Dragon for a Baron, which is not really a bad deal. In this case, because I have a very fat Twitch, I'm able to hit the ulti uh, onto the enemy team, which allows the Twitch to run on in 
kill two people and secure the dragon. I, I, in fact, I think he killed three people, maybe? I, I think I only saw him kill two, so I think that uh, Seraphine must have died later on. Yeah. So anyways, we do end up um, getting the, the dragon, and here I'm... You know, I'm helping with the Morgana with the Blitzcrank. Uh, Blitzcrank hops the wall where Morgana can no longer attack him. Um, seeing as the red buff, uh, blue buff, sorry, tanked the Q. So I'm fi I finish off the kill onto the, the uh, Blitzcrank. And here I'm going to roam back to mid to join my team. Popping the Redemption to allow them to heal a little bit more. With the help of the Baron buff, we can easily push down um, this tower. And the enemy team is all about to respawn. But since we have double cannons and we have the whole team here... We can also push down this inhibitor, and then it's probably time to back off. So here, a little bit of a fight kind of just breaks out here. So I'm just like, kind of just launching my abilities, poking them just a little bit. I uh, you know, doing what we do. Uh, of course, we can't really end the game here. The whole enemy team is back up uh, and, um, and alive. So there's no way we can really end the game here. But uh, yeah, not quite sure what, uh, what we're doing here. Just walking around. So here my team is finally starting to back off. So here you can see Panthen pushing in the other lane. We're still pretty far ahead, so we don't necessarily need to reset uh, right here. So here we're pushing in the minions onto the, the tier 2. And we are able to pick up the tier 2. And here we can see some enemies rotating uh, over. Blitzcrank is just solo split pushing top for some reason. But yeah, a nice R by Lee Sin to kick uh, uh, all of us in one go, basically. Uh, pop the Redemption to, to just heal up a little bit. Here I get rooted, but thankfully I don't uh, get hit by Lee Sin. I pop the heal for the movement speed and just dodge the Seraphine ultimate, dodging the root uh, as well. So here I'm just staying in the back line and just trying to, to hit Ws onto people to prop my my items basically. But my team is kind of losing the fight at the moment. Kaisa picks up a triple kill and obviously there is no more fight to be had. And during this time, Blitzcrank is, is able to push down the top lane all the way to, in, to the inhibitor. So it's high time that we back, get ourselves some items and stop uh, the Blitzcrank from pushing or clear the minion wave if he is uh, already going away. Is under so here I pick up the Black Cleaver basically uh, at full build uh, by this point. Uh, of course the only remaining thing to do is to sell the support item to get another item. Uh, of course most likely the, the uh, Moral Reminder in this case seeing as there is uh, healing from the Teemo and the Kai'Sa. As well as, of course, passively from the Lee Sin. So anyways, Elder Dragon is about to spawn and has just spawned. My team is all just respawning. So what we're really trying to do here is trying to delay uh, time and trying to make sure the enemy team doesn't do the Elder um, you know, before our team gets here. So our team is all kind of making their way here. Uh, another use of Hawkshot is something like this. So you can actually use the Hawkshot to reveal like hidden enemy traps like um, like Jin traps or like uh, Teemo Shroom. So here you see... Uh, I reveal them with the hog shot, and I'm going to just clear them out so that my team doesn't get chunked um, by by the, the traps. So here we're going onto the Elder Dragon Control Ward to make sure the enemy team can't see. And here I'm trying to launch the ulti to help out my, my Twitch on Morgana, but the fight has migrated a little bit more towards the enemy side. So kind of a fight on two fronts, we have a 2v2 at the top lane and a 3v3 in the Dragon Pit. Kind of a really strange thing to happen here. Popping the Redemption, unfortunately Kai'Sa decides to focus me, flashes forward, gets uh, the kill onto both of us and um, the fight sort of now converges at, onto the Dragon Pit. Now here, look at how low the Dragon is. The Twitch could have just turned around and finished the Dragon right here with like one or two more auto attacks but he kind of gets kill hungry and, and ends up going for the kills uh, which I, I guess is fine because the Dragon's partially reset and the Pantheon and the Twitch can still fall back onto the Dragon and finish it up. But I, th I just thought personally that um, if I were to Twitch, I would just finish the dragon there. Anyways, here Blitzcrank back in the picture, hooks uh, uh, Panthen in. Full combos him, which basically means Twitch is the only champion on our team still with the Elder buff, which kind of defeats the purpose of having the Elder buff. But anyways, Blitzcrank tries to do the same thing in the Twitch, but thankfully Twitch has enough DPS to kill the Blitzcrank. And yeah, so we do have we do still have Elder buff on Twitch, which I guess if someone on our, on our team had to get it, Twitch getting it is probably the best because he's obviously the most fed member of our team. He's on full build and he probably can carry with the Elder buff. Anyways, there's a huge uh, wave in the bomb lane. So here I'm just going to clear up the wave. Another thing I didn't really point out as to why I didn't get the Moral Reminder and such earlier is because Morgana and Bran both have Moral Nomicon which of course gives anti-heal and both of them have a lot of AoE abilities to apply to the enemy team. So didn't really feel that was a hurry but 
uh, you know, now that we've completed everything else, of course, just getting the Moral Reminder is not gonna hurt. So here I can see Lee Sin in the area, which is why I backed off from the Honey Fruit. Uh, but now that I have Twitch with me, I'm not afraid to walk up here because Twitch can instantly destroy the Lee Sin if he tries to come in. Here I hit the out onto the Lee Sin, try to get a pick for my team, and we do manage to pick up uh, the kill onto the Lee Sin. Double redemption once again. Uh, here, um, the Kai'Sa gets caught out, tries to ult in to get the kill, but ends up dying for it. And uh, Twitch is just, uh, you know, having fun at this point. Only Seraphine and Blitzcrank are left alive, and um, at this point, uh, we can simply just walk down the lane and end the game. Um, I do try to hawkshot to see if I can spot them, like if they're recalling or whatnot. I can of course launch my um, ulti to try to stop them, but um, I spot none of that. So instead, we're just going to end up finishing the game and of course getting the win. So I'm going to leave you guys with the stats as usual. Thank you guys so much for watching the video and goodbye.